Hi everyone, my name is Seema. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be ranking the characters of the Netflix show Ragnarok based on how badly I want them to throw me through a wall. This is a series I've done a lot of videos on before, so I'll pop the playlist somewhere up on the screen, but in essence, it's basically exactly what it sounds. I'm ranking these characters not necessarily based on how much I like them or if I think they're the best characters or my favorite characters on the show, but those things will factor in a little bit, but it is primarily a ranking of how badly I want them to throw me through an object, how capable I think they are of doing that. Like, there's characters I would like to do this to me a lot who will be pretty high on the list, but like realistically they may not be able to do it well, so that will dock them some points. Apologies if you can hear weird noises in the background. My dog Luna is scratching very ferociously at a rug. There are disclaimers that always apply to this series. If you want to see all of them in full detail, just watch the first video in that playlist I popped earlier, but in essence, this is not necessarily like a sexual thing or a romantic thing. It's literally exactly what it sounds. Obviously there are some people I think are hot and that's why I want them to throw me through things, but there are people on this list who are pretty high up there that I'm not like attracted to. I just like think would be very good in this particular application to like get the job done. Also, this is all like obviously hyperbole. I do not recommend throwing people. I don't recommend being aggressive with people, especially not without their consent. Please don't try this at home. Please don't do this at home. Please don't do this to anybody like ever, but especially not without asking and discussing it beforehand. I just don't think you should be hurling real humans at walls. Real humans are not usually like resurrected Norwegian gods, Norse gods. So I feel like if you threw like a normal human at like a solid object, it would like end badly for most of their like bones and stuff. So don't do that. Cool, with all that out of the way, let's get started. As usual, I went on the wiki for this show and I looked at the character list and there were 18 characters, so I went with those characters. I'm sorry if your favorite like side character was not in that list and therefore didn't end up on this list. If I forgot someone that you think is important, mention them down below and I will tell you where I will swap them in. But for now we have 18 characters based on the characters that were in the wiki list. So we're just gonna go from there. Number 18 is, I'm sorry, I don't know how to say her name, but it's Oscar's mom who is also like a cop in the town. I don't know if she's like the police chief or what, but she's like the main cop that's all, like assigned to like investigate util industries and all of that. So she's low on the list for a couple of reasons. I think like, she's a cop, so I feel like physically she probably would be able to like throw me quite like a little bit of distance, but like, I don't know. She seems like nice enough for a police officer, but she also like in like canonically in the show did kind of a bad job of investigating the environmental accusations that Magne was hurling at Util Industries. She just kind of like, you know, didn't listen to him and like really like demonized him for stuff that was out of his control, like just the way he was behaving because of like obviously everything that was happening to him. Like he was a teenager and he was being treated like a criminal. She like was being very negligent and not like, l like listening to him. And I just feel like, yeah, she just like, I don't know, she seems nice ish but I just have no strong feelings for her one way or the other and I don't want her to like throw me anywhere. I feel like having no feelings in this category specifically like will put you below people I have like negative feelings for because it's like at least if there's negative feelings I think about you and therefore if you are strong I can take that into consideration and like reluctantly bump you up but when I just like I'm like mm, whatever it automatically gets you low on this list which is also why number 17 is I don't even know if you say her name is Signy or Sig Signy but like it's the new girl they bring in in season two to be Bagney's new like love interest. She's just kind of new. She's there to be a love interest. She's just like an average teenage girl. I don't feel strongly about her character one way or the other. She seems nice enough. I'm, hope I'm hoping we'll get more of her like character in the next season of the show. So right now I just don't have anything. And because I don't have anything on her, I can't really say much about her. And therefore I don't particularly have any feelings about her ability to throw me at anything and nor do I want her to throw me at anything. So she's just kind of pretty low. Hopefully they'll give her some extra character in the next season and maybe if I do like a, a part two of this or like a after season two like or after season three like redux edition then we can like see if she moves up or not but that's where she's at. Number 16 is Halvor who I believe is that dwarf who works at the old folks home and then she and then he like helps them forge Magne's hammer. Well, again I just don't like know enough about him. He seems like nice enough. He seemed to care for his like the people he was caregiving for and ultimately he helps Magne get his weapon but I just like, again, don't have enough of him as a character on his own to really like have a strong opinion about him. He's also like, I don't want to judge a package by how it looks, but he's like very small, obviously. So I don't know if he has the strength to throw me. But then again, if he's actually like a dwarf, like mythologically so, then maybe he's like stronger than he looks because like, I feel like the average dwarf is like stronger than the average human. Like they're known for like strength and forging and all that stuff. So like, even though he's very small, he might be really strong. So like, that's why he's like a little higher up than other people on this list. But yeah, still pretty low. Just not enough character for me to like particularly want him to do this. Even if like looks can be deceiving and he is very capable. I don't, I just don't have enough to really 
make a judgment there. Number 15 is Wench. Wenche? Wench. She's the bitch. Okay, no, sorry, that's, that's rude. She's not a bitch. She's the woman that like gives Magne and Iman their powers. But the issue I have with her is she's so freaking vague. She's so not helpful. Like she could have like just like been straight with Magne and also like just like giving people powers without consent is kind of like shitty. I don't care if you're like actually like, reawakening something that was in them all along. It was just like awful to like hoist what she did on like a teenager like could you not wait till he was older to start like the war and it's like i guess the argument could be made that like oh well the utils were doing whatever they were doing and like you can't like like you know wait for Magne to grow up to stop them from like destroying the world but it just seems like cruel to do that to like a child and a child that you already know is like struggling a lot with other things in his life so i don't know maybe i'm just bitter that she didn't give me any powers but she's like a she appears to be like a pretty old lady She's also, she's also dead. That's another factor of why she's so low. She's dead and therefore can't actually throw me at anything. But if she were hypothetically still alive, I just like don't, I don't know. She doesn't like look, she'd be very good at it. She can't turn into a bird though. So like maybe she was like an, in her like eagle form and she like was a giant eagle and like picked me up with her like talons and like flew me up like really, really high in the sky and then like flung me not even through a wall, just like at a mountain or something. That could be kind of fun, kind of intriguing conceptually. And that like that like intriguing like maybe concept is why she's, you know, I wouldn't say high, but not like lower. But yeah, there's just again, there's too much working against her. I'm iffy on some of her choices. I don't love the stuff she's done. She just, just like died when things became difficult. And I say die like she didn't get murdered, but still like, you know, like it's like very inconvenient timing of you to like fuck off and die when shit's getting real finally. Number 14, 14 is Wotan Wagner, who is also, I think I'm saying that properly. He's the guy who's like in the wheelchair in the old folks home and he's like one eye and he's like the reincarnation of Odin, like the, the king of Norse gods or whatever. And yeah, it's the same sort of thing where I'm like, he's just so, like after he like fought, really remembers who he is and his power is like awakened or whatever and he remembers he's Odin, he's just so mean to Magne, so like not understanding. His own like pride and his own actions are what like do a lot of the work in like fracturing the relationship between Magne and Loritz. Like it's just so frustrating that he's like very dedicated to splitting these brothers apart and like not even considering that maybe Loritz wants to be good and wants to do the right thing and he's just like oh no your brother's an evil little shit like don't talk to him don't want him into our plans and like he's just so mean to Magne and like you know he's like literally he's a child and you're out here like oh well if you're not like willing to like commit to killing your brother right now then like screw you're not part of this what the hell like it's just, it's so mean he's so mean he's a mean old man and I don't like him very much, but he's also king of the gods, theoretically, so I feel like if he ever finds a way to like activate his actual powers, he'd be strong as fuck, and then, therefore I feel like it's the same logic of why Zeus was so high in my Hades video. It's like when you have the opportunity to be flung by the king of like a pantheon of gods, I feel like it would be foolish to not take that opportunity, and that's why he's so high. I just feel like, you know, like bucket list items being flung into a wall by a god, like the most powerful god. Very dope, very down for it. But yeah, he's just, his attitude is so off-putting. He's so frustrating. What a, what an, what an evil little man. All right, number 13 is Harry. So Harry is like the mechanic guy who is also a, I think he's the reincarnation of the god Tyr, who's like, I think the god of war in Norse mythology. And he's another character where it's like, I feel like we just don't have a whole lot on him, but I also think he'd be strong as fuck because he's the god of war. And so he's high up because I want him to throw me because I think he'd be strong and so I think I would go flying like football field length, etc. But I just need more of his character. It's kind of like, I'm just, I think that the point is that like all these North gods, Norse gods are kind of like ethically ambiguous, but it's like, he does a lot of like crummy things and like had this, like seemed to like be kind of like, like using his power, not in like the best ways necessarily all the time. And he was just like, he had an attitude. So like, I kind of like was not really down with him at first, but I'm warming up to him now that like they're kind of becoming more of a team and his like relationship with Iman is kind of cute. So like I'm warming up to him, but I don't like love him or anything, which is why he can't be higher up. But I do think he'd do a really, really good job because he's, he's like jacked and he's not like ugly or anything. So I'd be down for it. Number 12 is Vidar. So he's like one of the frost giants, the the Jotuns. He is a, he's like the, the patriarch of the house. And okay, this guy creeps me out so much. Like he just runs around in the woods naked and like rips the hearts out of like deer and shit. And like gives his like son that he didn't know existed, like his bastard's son, like half giant, half human son, a heart to bite in to activate his powers. Like it's so, 
again, it's such a mean thing to do to a child. And like, at least in like in his defense, like he's meant to be a villain. So like, you're not meant to be like, oh, this is a great thing that he did. But if it's like bad that he does it, why isn't it bad if they do it to like Magne and Iman? Like, why is it good to be giving any of these children these powers? He's just like one of those things where it's like, I feel like he genuinely did care about his kids. But he's also just like such a dick. Like he literally killed a teenager like in the first episode of the show. And he's just so power hungry and so terrible and he doesn't give a shit that he's destroying the planet. And they have like crumbs of like, oh well he wants like his family and he wants like, I don't even get like why his like his attachment to Fiore in that way just because like the show seemed to imply that like the the, the Utils are like not actually a family. They're like, they're just like cosplaying a family. Like they take turns being the parents and the children. So it's like, okay, well if Fiore is not actually your son, he's just like pretending to be your son and sometimes you pretend to be his son. Then like, why are you so attached to this idea of having a son but then I guess it's like maybe after all the years they've become attached so it's like even if they don't necessarily have the strictly defined like father son mother daughter roles they, they're kind of more of like a found family where they have like that relationship with each other maybe but it's just like it's confusing and he's a creepy creepy man who killed a teenager and has attempted to kill other teenagers and he's just a bad person so I was not upset when he died but I was upset by the impact that it had on Loritz and the people around and it also made like Fjord go evil again but that all that being said he is the patriarch of the giants and if he were still alive i think that ability would make him throw me really far i just don't trust that he would do it without killing me i think he'd want to kill me and so i don't think it would be a very safe throw so i can't like put him higher up for that reason but i think before i died i would have a lot of fun flying through the air like a frisbee so that's my stance on that but oh my god vidar please if you ever come back to life or something or in the afterlife put some clothes on buddy what are you doing running around naked in the woods what if someone saw you I guess you'd kill them, but like, what the hell, dude? With your stupid, shitty, polluting company. Number 11 is Ran Util. So she is Vidar's wife. I don't, again, I don't actually know if they're married, but you know, she is the wife in the family and the matriarch. She is also the principal of the school. We don't like her. She, I think, is the, I think, the giant with the least, like, heart to her. Like, there's, like, very, look, look all the, all the, the giants are kind of shitty people, but they have moments that sort of humanize them a little bit, or at least like make you see cracks. And I think they try to do that a little bit with Ron because like you see her be like genuinely like really upset when Vidar dies and like have moments where she's like upset, but it's like, they're so infrequent and she moves on so quickly that it like doesn't even matter. But the shitty stuff she does is so much worse than so many of the other like giants. Like she sleeps with her students, which is like, even if she was just like a normal human principal, that would be an awful disgusting thing to do, but she's a, no she's a not a normal human principal. She's a thousand year old giant cosplaying as a human school principal, sleeping with her students who are not just like decades younger than her, but like millennia younger than her. And also she is like abusing power because she has like power over them. So like gross, ew, icky. She's also just like so unsympathetic to like what her children, again, I don't know if they're actually her children, but like what her children need and desire and their wants and their dreams. And she's determined to shove them into these ar archaic like gender roles. And she tries to run Loritz and Magne and their mom over with a car. She's just like so terrible, like consistently, but she's a bad bitch. Like she's so tall and so powerful. And therefore, again, it's a, it's a similar thing where I think if she did it, she would commit to it and I would fly really far. And I also think if I didn't like cross her, like I, don't, I think Vidar would kill me just for fun. I think if I didn't cross her and I just asked her like politely, she would do it and not kill me. Like she'd be down. If I like pledged allegiance to like becoming her vassal or something, I think she would totally be like, whatever. Yeah, sure, whatever, I'll, I'll fling you. So like, I think I'd more have chances of survival with her, but I just think objectively, she's a way worse person than her husband. Number 10 is Iman. So Iman is, she comes in in season two, I think, or maybe the end of season one, but she's the reincarnation of the goddess Freya. Again, Iman's a character where it's like, she's not, she's a, she's a very complex character, which I really like, but I don't like her necessarily yet like I don't I think I'm warming up to her slowly but it's taking a really long time just because like she's so like she goes from being like super flippant with her powers and like using them to like ab like abuse people basically like brainwash them into giving her good grades and like getting what she wants getting free clothes like doing all the stuff like basically like, abusing her powers pretty much to being like all on Magne's case because he's not like all immediately gung-ho to like kill her kill his brother and like do what needs to be done and it's like he was the most serious out of all of you so how are you gonna come at him for not suddenly being like, let's go off to war, even though the war might involve harming somebody I care so much about. So like, it's like, I would love for her to stop abusing her powers and also be nicer to Magne, but I also recognize that she is a teenage girl. And so it's like, I can see how I would approach the situation and I can also see that she's being unreasonable and unfair and hypocritical, but I also don't think it's like, I don't know, it's, it's very easy for me as a 26 year old to be like, well, this 16 year old kid or 17, I don't know how old they are supposed to be, like, but this teenager shouldn't be like abusing her powers and using it to get free shit, but like, 
Are you kidding? If I was that age and I could do that, I probably would. Like, I, I can't even, like, lie about it. But anyways, that's why she's solid, like, number 10 in the middle of the pack. Again, I think she's, because she's a goddess, I think she would have strength in her. And, it, like, they, they even show on the show, like, she has a way more strength than it looks like just looking at her because she's a goddess and because she trains all the time. Like, she's jacked and she's a good fighter and she's really, really strong and can, like, overpower people who are, like, double her weight. So I think she could throw me pretty far and I think it'd be a good throw and I think... I think with some time, we could probably strike up some sort of like friendship so it wouldn't be like hostile. So I think there's like potential there. So you know, middle of the pack throw, definitely. Number nine is Zol. So Isol dies in the very first episode and it's awful. It's so sad. Like first of all, like way to like bury a gay in like your first episode. That's terrible. It's, oh, it's so awful. But she's like very much like this haunting figure like throughout the rest of the series. She's definitely like Magne's like conscience in a lot of ways. She was such a fighter for climate change and she was just such a sweet character like she was just like sweet and also like took no shit and was like not afraid to be herself which is like a very admirable trait that i think more more of us should aspire to be like i think like more of us should aspire to be like her but also not the part where she paraglided and then got murdered so like with her i just like her you know like, i don't think she's the strongest character i don't think she would throw me very far i think i would have to like argue a lot with her to even get her to be willing to do it i might have to be like hey if you throw me i'll like come investigate this like sketchy environmental disaster site with you or something or like offer her to pay money to like i don't know greenpeace or something i feel like that would be how i'd get her to do it but i think she would it, it would be fun like, i think we just have a good time and i think she would try she wouldn't be very good at it but i think her heart would be in it and she just seems cool like it just felt mean to put her below so many other characters even if i think like physically she maybe not does not have it she just like i think she has the heart of someone who's much stronger you know and that's what matters i'm really sad she's dead and i'm just like really upset thinking about it because it was really sad and she was like Magne's only friend and she was just like such a good character. I'm so sad. Okay, let's move on to number eight. So we're getting into spicy territory now. So number eight is Gree. Again, Gree, not very strong, would not be able to do it. I think would have to be persuaded to do it. But I think once I persuaded her, she would put her whole back into it. She'd go like all for it. Because the thing with Gree that's so interesting is she's just such a genuinely likable character. Like she's very stands up for herself. She takes no shit. Even when she gets with a bad boy, she like doesn't like lose her sense of self. She like puts standards for him and he can either choose to meet them or not. But she's not moving her standard. And it's like, it's like Fiora can choose to meet them or she'll leave. And she does that. She shows that she can do that. And she just like gets dealt like the worst hand possible. Like she loses a friend. Her boyfriend like fucks her over all these times and also tries to kill her. Even though I don't think she ever realized that that's what he was trying to do. And she just like, her dad gets sick and then dies. And it's just like, so like, just, it's like a hit after hit for that girl. And she just remains this like never ending, like optimist. It's always a smile on her face, always trying her best. Even though she's popular, she isn't afraid to like reach out to like Magne and unpopular people. And they kind of like try to bring them in. And she just has like such a good heart that I just love her so much. And I feel like I want to be her friend so badly. And that's why, again, I can justifiably put her lower than this. Even if I don't think she physically could do it, I think her heart is the heart of someone who could throw someone across a football field. And I just want what's best for her. And I don't think she's coming back to the show. I think they've established pretty solidly that she's moving out but, uh, of the city, but I'm gonna miss her. And I hope wherever she is post canon that she finds someone lovely and who doesn't deal her the worst shit possible like Fjord did. Cause like she deserves so much better. Number seven is Turret. So Turret is Magne and Loritz's mom. I love her. I get it. I have a, I feel like I mentioned this also in my Dear Evan Hansen video, but I have such a soft spot for like characters that are parents, you know, like just parents who are struggling, who are trying their best, especially single parents, but just the parents who again, are, like don't have money and don't have the perfect life, but just try every day for their kids. And I think the thing with Turid is she felt, feels so real. Like she tries so hard and she fails a lot of the time and she can't give them what she needs. And she has like secrets that she keeps because she's ashamed. And she just like feels like a very real person with a lot of layers. And I want to like, like learn so much more about her. And I'm like constantly afraid they're going to like hurt her or kill her somehow. But so far she's just been like vibing. I hope her and Eric get together because I think they'd be a very cute couple. But yeah, I think again, she's so high up here because one, I think she, okay, I don't think I need to convince her. I think I'd just be like, hey, Laura's and Magne's mom, can you just throw me really hard? And she'd be like, you know what? Sure. And when I was a kid, and she'll start like launching into a story about how people were always like violently throwing themselves into things. And then she'd throw me really hard. I think, again, for a human, because I have to keep prefacing for a human because there are like gods and giants on this show, but I think for a human, she looks pretty strong, you know? Like, I think she. Again, she's a woman who is not of like a privileged class, so she is obviously used to like manual labor, etc. So I think she would be pretty solidly good at it for a person, like a human person. And I think we would have a good time. And I just love her so much. I just wanna give her a hug, you know? I just wanna give her a really big hug and tell her she's doing her best and that like things will get better. 
for her because she really really deserves it and i love her so much and yeah she makes mistakes but she just like is like the best a queen truly okay number six is saxa Utool. so saxa is like again interesting because she's like a bitch like fully she she is a bitch but i really really admire her ambition like so much like i think she's a terrible person but i admire that she like is like fuck gender roles fuck this weird like box you're trying to put me in mom i can if if fjord doesn't want to do it then i can totally run this company and she like fully commits and like tries her best and like redirects things into a new direction and like yeah objectively she's a bad person like her she like is totally down with murder and her company like what she wants the company she's trying to save so desperately is like destroying the planet and destroying the world and she's like not a good person for being totally down for that but i do admire that she like is a driving force you know it's very much like the girl boss white feminism kind of driving force but that is what it is she has a great sense of style she impe impeccable style and i want to be as tall as she is she's so freaking tall it's like unfair and i just love her so very much just from like a pure like aesthetic standpoint like i wish i looked like that and just again because she look, is so tall and so statuesque i think she could pick me up and fling me and again i think she would be totally down to just kill me like she wouldn't care but i think if we were like besties before like if i kind of convinced her that we were friends and we were, i was really committed to the friend bit then maybe she wouldn't kill me but even if i did i feel like it would be a fun fly and i think yeah it would be like one of the furthest because she's young she's strong as fuck she's a giant It'd be great and she's like already illustrated her power right like she's gone on like and fought with like people in the show and she's been really good at it so i think i think she could do it i really do number five is oscar so again oscar is a human so i don't think he'd be like the best on this but i just love oscar because he's like of the friends that they have at the school like he's one of the only ones that stand out to me like i don't like i can't even remember the names of any of the other ones because I know there's like two or three others that aren't even on this list because I can't remember their names. They have no distinguishing fig like characteristics. So I just put them at the bottom of the list if you can think of them. But I love Oscar because he's just like down to clown. He's always making jokes, but you can tell he really cares about his friends. He's always like super supportive. He doesn't like push a, like a sore subject and he looks out for them. But he's just like the funniest guy. Like I feel like, like he would be the one to always be lifting the mood and checking on his friends. And if he can tell they're not okay, trying to like distract from the situation. He seems like such a cool dude. And I think of the like human characters, again, he's one of the stronger ones, I think. He's like a teenage boy, so but kind of flimsy. But you know, I think he's one of the stronger ones. He seems to make good choices. I just love him. I think as far as like the supporting cast goes, he's pretty chill. He's pretty chill. Again, I hope we learn more about him this season going forward. Like we know that the, the, his mom is a cop. We never really see them interacting together, even though they're both like distinct characters on the show. So it seems like a missed opportunity. I guess they're trying to like do the world building and imply that it's like a really small village, but it seems like weird, like like a missed opportunity in terms of world building to like have those characters be related, but never get to see them like interacting together. Like I know the show is not about them and I know they're human, so there's not really any reason to cut to them because it's a show about, show about like reincarnated mythological figures. But I just like wish even in the background we could see them like interacting more in some way, which again doesn't really address the point. But like, yeah, I think for a human, he could throw me and I want him to throw me because he's just like such a fun character. I adore him. Number four is Fjord, you tool. So Fjord is the son, brother, whatever of the, the giants. And he's like so... Well, he's an actor, right? An actor is an adult. I've talked about this. But his actor is so attractive. He is so attractive. Like, he's so pretty. And I don't even know why I'm prefacing this with, like, oh, I've checked the age of his actor. Because, like, even the character is meant to be, like, thousands of years old. But, like, so the, I just, I'm just saying it's not creepy. But he's so pretty. Like, inhumanely so. Like, it's, it's like, the, the way they cast him and also Saxon, to be honest. But, like, the way they cast him works so well. Because I look at him and I believe that he's, like, not a human. I'm like, yeah, you are unreasonably beautiful like when they cast twilight and i looked at the cullens i was like i like the actors and all but i was like none of you like strike me as inhumanely beautiful like i don't look at you and think that can't be a real person i look at the guy who plays fjord and i'm like okay you are too good looking like you are frustratingly good looking but he also like is so good at like also looking like the smarmiest douchiest guy ever and he just plays it so well like the parts of the show where he's being sympathetic where he's like doubting his loyalties to the giants when he's becoming more human by spending more time with Gree and dress and he just like slowly like becomes more of like a real person like he plays those so well and then like he's like heel turn going back to like, the company going back to like his shitty agenda to, like because he w wants to make this idea of his father who's not even his father and is also dead like proud like all that is like so well executed but he's just so frustrating like him like, leaving Gree it was like so expected but it just made me so mad so all that being said he's a great character he's really interesting I like that I just cannot predict like if he what side he's gonna land on at the end of the show like I just don't genuinely no idea but he's so cute and he's obviously a giant so I know he's strong as fuck and it was like yeah, I, would, I want him to hurl me violently through a wall, through a window, through a table. It doesn't matter. Just, like, pick me up like a sack of potatoes and just, like, launch me. Launch me as far as you can. If I break my neck, my spine, whatever, it's totally cool. That's not me. You know, he caught me slipping. Whatever. I Like, I wouldn't even ask him to be careful or to, like, not try to kill me. I'd be like, you know what? Whatever. Whatever you want, sir. 
do it. My life is in your hands. Do with it what you will. But he sucks. He really does. But I love him so much. And I want to take him by the collar and shake him. Be like, why didn't you go with Gri? Why didn't you stay a good person? He, like, he's definitely like a character where I'm like, I could fix you. Or make you worse. I don't know which, but like, something could happen. Okay, number three is Eric. Eric is the teacher at the school. He was also Isolde's dad. I love him. Again, I am so fucking soft for parents. Like, par parental figures just make me so, like... I can't cope with it. Like, I just get so sad about parents. There's like parents like this where it's like, life fucking kicked you in the nuts. Like he loses his daughter in the first episode and his grief is so palpable for like the entire first season. It like hurts me to think about. Like my stomach hurts thinking about his grief in the first season. And it's like one of those things where it's like, again, I can't fucking cope with the idea of like children, of like parents losing children. Cause it's like one of those things that like goes like against like nature, like fundamentally, right? Like parents are not supposed to like outlive their children. And so it's just like, oh God. And like his actor just played it so well and so subtly, like, like literally I'm getting teary thinking about like just those scenes, like right after she dies, when he's just like in the grocery store, staring at the bottles of water that he would like, go by for her before when she was alive because she was always like, don't drink the town water. Like I know something's wrong with it. I know it's contaminated. Don't drink the town water. And he'd always go along, even if he didn't necessarily believe her or thought she was like too radical or was going too far. He was always looking out for her and always willing to do whatever she asked. And like the way he like stops in the grocery store and like breaks down over the bottled water got me so bad. And it's like, that's not even like, he already lost his wife like before the show starts. So now he's like totally alone in the world. And that's why I want him so badly to get with like, with like Turid, it's just because I don't want him to be alone. He's such a sweet, lo like lovely man. And I just like want him to like not just be like in his like lonely little house, like filled with despair. He was just like such a good teacher. Like you can tell he cares about his students. He goes above and beyond to like help Magne out outside of work. Even with all the things going on where they're pulling Magne out of school. And he's just like, he's so apologetic about any of the trouble Magne gets in. He's like, you can tell he's so clearly worried just about his mental health and wanting him to like get better and do better. And it's just like, like just like, you know, helping him out when he's struggling in school because of his like dyslexia or whatever. It's just like, I love him so much. And that is why he's so high up on this list because like, he just, he's so sweet. He's just, I just love him so much. And that's why he's so high up on this list. Cause he's just like the sweetest, sweetest man. And again, he's a human, but he's an adult human. So I think as far as the humans go, he could probably launch me the furthest and I would allow him. But even if he doesn't want to launch me, I think I can just like give him a hug and tell him things are going to be okay. I could also be like, if, if he does, if him and Tora don't work out, I could be his like new wife. I'd be down. I wouldn't want to replace anybody, but I just want to keep him company. And he just makes me so sad. <laughs> I just want this good for him. And I think maybe if it would make him feel better to throw me at something, to throw me on a window, throw me at a wall. I don't know, but I just want him, I just want him to be well. So that's why he's number three. And I think my dog is coming over to see me because I'm crying. <sighs> Okay, I'm fine. I'm so good. I'm almost done. Number two is Magne. So Magne is like the protagonist of the show. He's the reincarnated version of the god Thor. And I love him. I just, he's so, he's like, he's this big guy, but he's just so sweet. Like he's the softest, sweetest heart. Like he doesn't want to hurt anybody. And he's just given these powers that he doesn't want. But like, he's like, what the fuck? And he like, is totally down at first until he finds out he might have to hurt his brother and he's like no like, I can't do that like I can't hurt my brother he's my brother and I just like I love him I love him he again he's his heart is so good and I feel like the older I've gotten the more I've come to like admire like characters like that who are just like trying their hardest to be good and just like have good warm pure hearts like I still love the edgelords and I, I, as number one on this list will tell you like I'm never gonna like, like let go of my love of edgelords but I feel like I used to get annoyed with like cookie cutter good characters and now I'm like no, you know, like really good characters sometimes are warm my heart. And I think with Magnet, it's because he's not like a flawless type of like good character, right? Like he does a lot of things wrong and he makes a lot of like mistakes. And a lot of those mistakes bite him in the ass really hard and like causes relationships to fracture. But you can tell day in and day out, he's trying to do the right thing. He's trying to do what he thinks is right and what's best for people. He doesn't have like a selfish bone in his body. Like he truly is just like trying his hardest and there's just like a fundamental miscommunication and like inability to connect nowadays between him and Loritz. And he's just like, the way he takes out his worry on Loritz is like an issue because like you can tell he is like, you can tell he's only doing it because he's worried about his brother, but his brother takes it to be like, oh, you just don't want me to connect with my family. And it's like, it's such a human struggle. I know they're a human, but it's such a human struggle. And I just like, I love Magne so much. I, he's just like so sweet. And I just like love how like, I don't know, I feel like maybe I should watch more shows, but I just like, I feel like stuff like learning disabilities and just like mental illnesses and, and all those things are not really like properly, like adequately, like 
addressed a lot of the time in shows or like represented I think is a better word because they don't really address it but it's just like it's one of those things it's a factor of his character where he has dyslexia and he needs accommodations and he has like workarounds and I just love that it's like a very natural part of the show where it's like okay so he takes voice notes in class because he can't really like write things and he like does text to speech a lot of the time to make sure his sentences come out like correct like with like correct spelling and stuff and it's just like I don't know, just little big details like that that they, they just didn't need to do in the show. There was no reason to do that, but I, I thought they were like really nice touches and it all just felt so na like natural and well integrated, which is not the point, but yeah. He has a good heart and he is so, he, he, he's Thor, so he's strong as fuck. Who the hell doesn't want the God of Thunder to pick them up like a sack of potatoes, swing them around a few, a few times and then just like fucking launch them? Like, I want, I want Magne to treat me like a fishing rod that you're like trying to cast your line. Like just do that with me, King. Just like fucking cast me like a line, but like not into the water, just like through a solid object, preferably a wall, maybe a window, maybe a tree. I don't know, dealer's choice. But yeah, I just love him so much. He's so pure of heart and I just look at him and I'm like, I love you, you are my, he's just a good boy. You know, he's just a good, good boy. And he fucked up so fucking hard in the end of season two. He really fucked up, but I, yeah, and he shouldn't have lied to his brother, and he shouldn't have gone behind his back, and he should have just like said like fuck it to everybody telling him not to trust his brother. He should have been like fuck it and trusted him anyway. And I think that would have ultimately made things a lot better, but he didn't. But I just really, really want good things for him in season three. I want him and Lawrence like reunite. And I know I'm like knowing how the mytho mythology goes, I know I'm like asking for too much, but I just want things to be okay because I love him a lot. And <laughs> last but certainly not least, number one on my list is Lawrence. I don't if you know me at all, this would not have been even a little bit of a surprise. Lawrence is a great character because it's like he's really in the first season, he's just a shit disturber. He's just there to cause problems on purpose. And he's kind of a dick, but he also is like, I look at him and he's the poorest of poor little meow meows. I'm just like, you are so pathetic. I love you so much. I, I could fix you, I could make you worse. I, 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 we could just be awful together. We'd be despairing together. I just love him. He's just like my sweet, wonderful little androgynous, shape-shifting, mischief god who like is just like fucking around, like just likes to cause problems on purpose, but is also just like struggling to find his sense of self and his identity and like this feeling of not fitting in and feeling like an outsider. And I just like look at him and I'm just like, every neuron, every like neuron in my brain just fires at the same time. I just, I love him so much. Look at him, he has nail polish, he has the emo hair, he listens to emo music, he like has like Avenged Sevenfold posters and stuff. It's just like, what a guy, you know, like made for me. And I just love that he like tries so many times. He tries so many times to trust people, to let people in and every single person in his life lets him down consistently over and over and over. And by the end of it, he's just like, fuck it. I can't rely on anybody. I can only rely on myself. So why shouldn't I be selfish? Why shouldn't I just look out only for myself? And I really respect that. I think we need more characters who are like, fuck it. I, I get that's the admirable heroic thing to do to be like, the world is mean, so I will not be. But I think we need more, the world is mean. So I'm just gonna be selfish about it. Fuck you guys. And I love that about Lawrence because I look at him and I'm like, you are relatable fundamentally. And his search for a sense of self and his grasping for who he is is just like so, I just love it so much. I just, yeah, he's one of those characters, right? I look at him and I see myself, but then I also look at him and I'm like, I love you. And I want to kiss you on the mouth a little bit. So yeah, we, we love a chaotic God who steals his mom's clothes and puts them on and dances out the night away. So anyways, why is he number one? All of those things I said, I love him very much. It's like a personal bias thing, but also like genuinely, like I think he'd be good at it. Like obviously like he's not as strong as like Magne or like the giants, but especially because he's only half giant. So he's like half human to like tamper it down. But he still is half giant. He can be strong. I think if you wanted to, and if we like bonded and I was like, you know, how you have nobody in your life, I can be a person in your life for you. And maybe we'll start like a codependent sort of thing and that's problematic, but that's okay with me if it's okay with you. But I think if we were like on the same page about it, he could throw me and it would be beautiful, it would be wonderful. Maybe we could smooch before he throws me, I don't know. Again, character is a teenager in this show, but the actor is like 27, so this is not problematic, I, I swear. I just love him very much and I want good things for him. And I hope we get to see more of like his actual like Loki powers quote unquote in like the next season because like we haven't actually seen him do any like loki powered type things like he's mostly just a mischievous he like shape shifted in the first season but that was just dressing up as the principal and dyeing his hair like it wasn't like an actual type of shape shift and then him, like birthing a snake was just him like getting a tapeworm removed which again like these are all like it's like a show that's pretty grounded in realism so like i like that they're making most of the mythological things like not actually mythological they're like integrating them to like a realistic human sort of world but then you also still have like Magne, like so many lightning and shit. So like, I want to have some of that go to my boy Loritz, you know, like give him some powers. 
but because I love him so much, he's number one. Even if he's not the strongest person on this list, he's a giant. He has the power, I think, to, if he really wanted to, do well at it. And from what we've seen in the show, when he wants something and he really commits to getting something, he will go after it. And so I think if I was just like, hey, you would enjoy this. And he was like, yeah, I would enjoy this. He would really want to do well. And that is why he's number one. I love everything about him. He is my, my poorest little meow meow. I just like, yeah, he's everything. He is literally everything. He is the blueprint. Nobody is doing it like him. Society, if everybody dressed and acted and looked like this, so much better. We would all just be so much better off. And that's it. That is my list. If I miss anybody, put them in the comments below and I'll tell you where I put them on the list. If you had to rank these characters based on how badly you want them to throw you through a wall, put your own rankings down below or just your top three or top five or something. I would love to hear them. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. I would really appreciate that. If you want to follow me on other social media platforms, you can follow me on Twitter and on Instagram. And if you like this video and you want to hang out with me on my channel on other days of the week, I post new videos every Wednesday. So please hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys all next week. Bye!